When winning is the only option, the sharpest bettors in the world call me. Not because of what I know, but who I know. And the results, well, they speak for themselves. But talk is cheap. So let me show you. The Syndicate Insider Show starts now. And California, are you excited? I think it's a, it's a good vacation for the Here's place. what I think. It's a good vacation for the guys that are getting a free trip to Sydney, Australia, right. down under me. Here's the bottom line. If you want to get a Boston's beer, it's a good trip. If you want to have they've some... They've been there for a week. Right. They've been there for a week. Boy, they must be so drunk. They don't know what's going on. <laughs> Talk about time. Um, talking about getting used to time zones. I'm already on West Coast. If you watch my Snapchat, you know I left here at about... I think it was 12.06 because I time stamped it yesterday. And I was getting ready. Now, we got a text yesterday. Um, you got a text. Now, wait. You got a text from one of your big clients, Raider. Um, and he said to you, the streak has been broken. And the streak he was referring to, it wasn't a losing streak. It wasn't a winning streak. The streak was referring to the fact that there was zero games yesterday after a 3.6 unit win on Tuesday. Right. Which means... A dime better made 3,600. A 10 dime better made 36,000. And how did he do it? How so did he do it? How he did it was he played MLS. He had Toronto. He had Seattle Sounders on the draw. He had LA Galaxy on the draw. And he had a few dogs in baseball on Tuesday. The Orioles, the Angels, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, and he lost with the White Sox and Kansas City. Correct. And he went 3-2 and two in baseball. We talk about the winners and the losers because, again, we don't work on positive expectancy. Ask me what positive expectancy is. Ask me what's positive. What is positive expectancy? Positive expectancy, for you that don't know, is attempting to make money by wagering the same amount on each matchup, albeit the odds would be 11-10. And a good, having a win-loss percentage greater than 50%. So let's say every game was 110, like a, a football game. You got to go six and four to make money. Right. That's that doesn't work. Each stock has a different price. Each game has a different value. That's if you're simply playing even money. But how about if you were playing favorites? Forget about it as they would say, because yesterday we didn't play, but those dogs, they came in in a mighty fashion. So what you have to understand is the streak was broken because the dogs, the streak was broken for us because we had no info yesterday. I was working yesterday, not working on today's garbage football game in Sydney, Australia. Come on, the next foot set real football doesn't begin till September 1st, and trust me, I'm not going to be worried about football on September 1st. Because on September 1st, when you open up the Don Best Nevada rotation and you call this number, 1-800-880-7507, because you got that schedule in front of you for the short four-game board in baseball, I'm going to be at the T-Mobile Arena front row watching Cole Clay and Alicia Cavana having some fun. Because I only take a few liberties a year, and that's one of them. I'm a music freak. So, after I go deaf at that concert and have some fun, I am certainly not going to be hyper obsessed on matchups like Appalachian State, Tennessee, Oregon State, Minnesota, South Carolina, Vanderbilt, Rice, Western Kentucky, Tulane, Wake Forest, Charlotte, Louisville, Indiana, Florida International. And you know what the best thing about it is? A client asked me, he said, well, you claim you don't handicap the games anyway. I said, you know what the best thing about it is? That's right. So even if I'm in Vegas and I don't want to mess with any of these games, if I get the call, I just phone them back in and they release the information to my clients and it doesn't matter anyway. A client asked me yesterday, he said, what do you do when you meet the clients every three weeks in Vegas? On my Vegas one-on-one -on -one with John on the syndicateinsider.com. I mentor them. Have you ever seen a motivational speaker? Have you ever seen guys like Anthony Robbins? Have you ever seen guys like Grant Cardone? 
Have you ever seen guys like Gary Vaynerchuk? Or if you've been living under a rock? I am all those guys wrapped up in one in the sports betting industry. Because the biggest reason why people lose in this business is they have low self-esteem, no game plan whatsoever, and no desire to treat their wagering as a business. Furthermore, if you ask me what the nemesis and lack of success is for all sports bettors, make it a tad low, is the fact that there is no minimum requirement to actually be a sports better on a cash basis. So for instance, if, I, if you ask me, how many times does a client call you and says he's interested in getting into the sports betting game and he's thinking about opening up an offshore account or a telephone account in Las Vegas, William Hill, or one of these M Resort accounts or Sunset Stations accounts, and we say, and he says, I say, well, what's your operating capital? And he says, 500,000. I usually tell him, I think you should save your money, have a great day. We are not in the unrealistic world that, of other companies that are just in the business of selling information. We are in the realistic world that if you want to buy a thousand shares of Apple stock, you better have the money to buy a thousand shares of Apple stock. If you can't afford to buy the Apple stock, then you shouldn't even be in the market to begin with because it takes that money to actually be able to afford to trade and have the drawdowns. And you gotta, I, we always talk about money management, right? Right. Well, let me ask you something, Big Mike, because everybody saw you on Snapchat rocking those 100 pound dumbbells like they were toys. Stay back, baby girl, for a second. You, you got a question? Go ahead, you can ask that. <laughs> they all want my little girl on camera. Big officer, she was in the back. Um, sorry guys, broke my rhythm. Here's the bottom, and I'm not even gonna cut it out. Brought my, brought my baby girl in for a minute. Here's the bottom line, we talk about money management, but you gotta have money to manage. Right. You know, I do all these videos and we talk about money management. So listen carefully. We don't say credit management. Do we ever say credit management? We do not. Can you imagine if I said this sentence to you? Treat your betting as a business and worry about credit management. Doesn't sound right. Doesn't sound right. If you don't have money to manage, then you have no money to manage. My personal, I had, you know, you, you have all kinds in this business. So, you know, I have reptilian skin, right? 30 years in this business, you have, you, I've seen it all, right? I get a guy, he texts me and he says, you, you give, you are so believable on your video. You are so believe. You are the most believable guy I've ever watched in this industry. You impart and exude the confidence that makes the player feel that he can't win without you. Maybe that's his perception. Perception means more than reality. I thank him very much for those accolades. But then he flipped, right? And he said, and that's such a crocker, you know what? Because, of course you can lose. Who said that nobody can win without me? If you watch the 60 Minutes interview, which you can go to YouTube and watch with Billy Walters, he's got chicken days, he's got feather days. It's no secret, right? Here, here's the bottom line. The bottom line is this, money management. I can guarantee you he's not worried about his credit. The biggest reason most bettors lose is because bookmakers, it's the same reason why the housing market collapsed in 2008. Well, you were in that business, right? You're gonna laugh. Right? He was in that business. So tell me, they just issued credit. They yeah. issued too much credit, and they couldn't afford the paper. But but the people but the people they were given the credit to couldn't afford it. Couldn't afford it, right? Correct. So that would be no different than a bookmaker giving a guy a line that he can't afford. Correct. So then when a guy calls up here and we tell him it's four thousand dollars a month for our base service, or two thousand dollars a week, and he can't buy a week a day of picks for twenty dollars. And he says he's betting a nickel dime a game, and he goes. <laughs> now you understand why? Because the guy's fake. He's not fake, but he's, it's a fake wager. It's not real. He's betting on credit. There's no money management. It's credit management. So the the moral is, if you're watching this video, 
It's as my phones ring behind me. What you have to understand if you're watching this video on this big day of college football. And sometimes things come to me just live on the air as we're doing this video. Is that a bookmaker is the biggest parasite in the industry. Not a bookmaker in Vegas that makes you walk up. Not a bookmaker in, in Costa Rica that requires you to post up. But a bookmaker that extends you credit and doesn't vet you. And doesn't say, does it make you post up? A, not, a credit bookmaker is a piece of trash as far as I'm concerned. Because what he allows you to do is put yourself in where you're chasing. You're betting on money you don't have. Because you know what? If you could afford to do it, he could get the money up front. How many guys have we talked to that just said, make sure I owe my guy on Sunday? Well, why? If you can afford to, you're good. There's no issue. Why are you sweating? You're betting over your head. You have no business betting over your head. End of story. That's what we mean by money. That, that's a guy that needs credit management, not money management. The money management guy is a guy in Vegas with a telephone account. The money management guy is the guy with the offshore account with money posted up. You have to change your language and how you think about money, money versus credit. You got a debit card and you got a credit card. They look exactly the same. They both have a little Visa or MasterCard and Signet on them, correct? Correct. But when you go to make a purchase at the store, they ask you, is this debit or is this credit? Right. There's a difference, my friends. Which kind of better are you? Are you a debit credit? Are you a debit better or are you a credit better? I think we've uh, made our point here on this Thursday. So, again, like I said, it is Thursday. And one week from today will be September 1st. The question is, Art, is it Thursday or Friday? Because we didn't do a report yesterday, he still thinks it's Thursday. I was just looking at it. I let skip it go. a game. I was going to let it go. I skip a game. I'm looking at my face. No, my, my little girl, baby, she, she rattled me. I skip up, and I stayed home. I didn't come in so late. She had a little 103 today. A little 103. Um, September 1st, next Thursday. Are you going to make it a September to remember? If you're a credit player, ask yourself this. If that guy vanishes tomorrow and he disappears, how much cash do you have to fund your offshore account? How much cash do you have to get on a plane and fly with me to Las Vegas? and play at the window. Don't worry about the selections that you play from any handicapper that you purchase. Worry about the cash that you actually have to back your betting business. Because if you opened up an E-Trade account, if you opened up a Charles Schwab account, if you opened up a Thinkorswim account, if you opened up um, any futures trading account, nobody's going to give you credit. Now, here's something interesting. In the United States, because we have clients all around the world, in order to be a day trader in the stock market and have four to one margin, right? You must maintain a balance overnight of a minimum of $25,000 to have four to one margin and have buying power of $100,000. Or you get a margin call. Probably sounds like Chinese to people that don't know what I'm talking about. I wish that the sports books, whether it's a telephone book in Vegas, or whether it's an offshore book in Costa Rica, made the player have a minimum of 25000 to open up an account. Because then we wouldn't get those $500 account calls, those bogus guys. And I'm not calling you bogus, but I'm saying to you right now, if you're watching this video, if you think you're going to do something with $500 in your account, you can have fun. That's what you can do. You can have fun. That's what you can do. You're not going to make any money, period. Be true to yourselves, like we're being right here. Have fun, have a great time, get your blood pumping, and that's it. We're gonna see you guys in Vegas in a few days. Have a great day. It is Friday, the 26th. The 26th, and we are approaching September. The question is, are you gonna be using the debit card, or are you gonna be using the credit card? Which one are you going to be using? I never use a credit card. I only use... I'm rushing. I know. It's oh, cash only. It's they don't good. even use a bank. Cash good. only. Good day and good luck.